hello but yeah fuck it's me back again i i saw this thing heard this thing saw this thing from the grapevine called the red flag test what's your red flag i'm gonna show you a lot in a minute yeah i don't have any red flags but i'd like to find out if some things that i do are red flag worthy but i don't know i don't think i have any red flags <laughs> i don't think i do i'd like to find out though i'd like to find out for sure plan on this year this year right this year of 2023 2023 i plan on consistency right non-stop consistency when i'm when i say i'm gonna be on it i'm gonna be on it on it on it doing everything i like to do everything i want to do i'm gonna make sure i'm doing it giving it my all you know the shit shit let's get let's get it let's get it let's see i did like a few oh i did yeah 14 questions i don't know if it's gonna be the same questions but um yeah i didn't finish it because i was like, oh shit it's getting quite long and i was like oh let me fucking do this on stream so i was like all right let me do this shit on the stream instead of doing it now because i personally don't really give a fuck if i got red flags i'm not even gonna lie to you <laughs> i don't even care like that but i thought it'd be nice for me to just video it and see anyone cares you know what i mean if anybody cares no i don't want to let me start again let's do this shit from the beginning so you are someone whose name is bernie following a long period bernie has a new relationship both had been in committed and long-term relationships with a huge group of friends bernie and their partner went out for drinks someday it's a wonderful night all of them are getting ready to leave after this enjoyable gathering then all of a sudden bernie's partner asks have you got the key carol the ex-partner of bernie's partner is called carol so what should bernie do i'm gonna be honest with you right first time i read this shit i was fried it took me about six seven eight tries to read this <laughs> i was struggling some of you might be reading this going what the fuck <laughs> i don't know if it was just me but this was a hard thing to read at first i can't read by the way <laughs> i can't read by the way okay so now let's look at the options i think that's she slash he just said what without second thought bernie should leave calling bernie by their ex-partner's name is unacceptable the reason it's confusing is because it jumps back and forth from between first person and like third person i'm thinking so it's like he or she said what that's kind of what i'd say like yo you said what bernie should leave why is it now called talking about me like i'm not the one who just had that reaction do you know what i mean like you see this doesn't make sense i feel like i've lingered onto this first part a lot but it's you see what I mean when I say, and then without second thought, Bernie should, like, then, then it goes, it just switches to third person. It's like, I'm not really understanding. Is that even third person? Is that even third person? I don't know. I don't know. So that one's saying, yo, get the fuck out. I want to leave. I want to bounce out of here. This was absolutely, like, the worst thing that could happen. I'm going to have words with you afterwards. That's what that first one means. The second one, it's not that big of a deal. Bernie should smile and show that he or she doesn't take that seriously. Take it that seriously. Essentially saying, yo, it's not that big of a deal. Let's kind of move on. You know, what happens, happens. And yeah, I'm going to be honest, that's a bitch answer. That is a bitch answer. What do you mean it's not that big of a deal? It doesn't need to be that big of a deal. But what do you mean smile and show that? Bitch? What do you mean smile? I need to know. No, no we'll get to that in a second. I will get to, we'll get to my thoughts in a second. If Bernie had stated the same thing, how would the other side respond? bernie needs to consider that so that's like okay you're more so thinking okay would you like it if i did that to you type of shit so yeah since their current relationship is so fresh bernie should be calmed down she he did not do it that easy as seen by the length of time it took them to let someone into his life the other option might be to pretend not to hear i don't know what that meant so we're just not even gonna like talk about that as once because i don't i don't know what that one meant at all when they are alone bernie should talk to their partner about it that's the one i picked when they are alone bernie should talk to their partner about it because i mean obviously it's something you want to bring up like let's let's be real why are you calling me by your that's a bit of a weird thing i've never been called my girl has never called me by her ex's name it's like i've never called my girl by my ex's name you know what I mean? it's, not, it's not really like that you don't really it's not really like that so yeah just have a word just be like yo what's got my nose is itchy you're sorry about that so, yeah just have a little word and be like yo what's going on yeah i heard that is everything okay She'll be like, yeah, it was just an accident. And then you watch her reaction. You know what I mean? I need to see exactly what you're on. See how you react, how you respond to my questions. And then, then I'll let you go. <laughs> I'll let you go. Say, okay. <laughs> okay, you passed the test, baby girl. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, next. Let's assume you're only looking for a relationship for your convenience. These people need to be sorted through. Please choose from the most to the least. 
although she or he is older than you, she or he is quite wealthy. Their children have the same age as yours. Two incredibly toxic children, by the way. Yeah, it's like, I remember when I saw this, I said, okay, yeah, the children, you lost me there. Like, I'll say, yeah, if you got children, I can't do it. I mean, what are we talking about? Relationship? Like, what? Well, no, no, no. I mean, not relationship, but like, yeah, I mean, yeah, really. No, no. But what am I saying? No, if you got kids, that's that's a lot, especially if I want to take it serious, because then that means I've got to then deal with the fact that you've experienced that shit as well before me. Like, you know, you've had that you've had that child before me. You've experienced it for the first time before me. I don't get to experience it for the first time with you, for the first because you've already experienced it with someone else. The second one, a successful attorney. She's gone through multiple marriages and divorces. The previous relationships ended because of their betrayal. Oh Jesus! Fuck! I was so hung up on the attorney. I was just kind of just, I I wasn't really understanding the rest of it. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, that's a that's a, that's a good job. The third one is an officer at a regular corporation. Despite being an introvert, she or he has a charismatic personality. Mm, I love that. Introverted, charismatic. Okay, that's nice. That's a peace of mind. Peace of mind, girl someone who has a close bond with their parents the only thing you are aware of regarding is how stunning she or he looks okay close bond with the parents that's okay to a certain degree but when it comes the thing where your parents are actively just involved in your relationship that's that's too much that's too much and if that's going to be the case you can slip down the list so we will go from the most the officer i love you and then we will go to this is the next best like i will fight the kids though like no fucking joke that's that's a given <laughs> she's gonna need to know that and then third go with the parents and then fourthly the she devil go with that what is the types of people that you can't stand i can't stand we got narcissists fake people liars emotionless people people who don't understand sarcasm meddlesome nosy people people who are quick to judge and are snobby Hmm. Straight away, I'm thinking this bottom one first. Okay, that's one I don't fuck with that one. People who are quick to judge and are snobby, emotionless people. I mean, bruh, show some compassion. Fake people? Yep. No, no. Oh, liars. Yeah, liars. Fake people. Yeah, that's fine. That's true. I didn't read the question properly. What is the types of people that you can't stand? Yeah, I can't stand narcissists. Yeah, because I don't like being around them. So yeah, that's cool. I said that and I was about to go into a long-winded speech, but that's because I didn't understand the question. Emma and Noah have been a couple for a long time. It would be inaccurate to say that they almost grew up together. In the sixth year of their relationship, Emma confesses to Noah that she stayed monogamous for years simply for him and that she now prefers an open relationship. Emma tells Noah that he should accept this offer if he genuinely loves her. How would you react if you were Noah? Well, I mean, if I was Noah, it's as simple as this. Fuck Emma. It's like, fuck you, Emma. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean you now want an open relationship? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Emma can do this manipulation away from me and to someone else. Yeah, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> what are you talking about? You want an open relationship. Well, just don't. Now what? What, what, did, what did she say she was going to do? Emma tells Noah that she should accept this offer if... If he genuinely loves her. Well, I don't love you then. I don't love you. I don't love you. I never did. I never did. I don't want to. Get out. Get Pack your bags now. Fuck my finger. All right, let's pick one. Relationships can change. I'll consider the open relationship. What a bitch ass answer. What a stupid answer. Noah would never say that. My Noah would never say that. The Noah that I live, it would never say that. Let me tell you. Nah, nah. If Emma was like that, then she lied to me. It's a pity that I never actually knew her. The foundation of my relationship cannot be a falsehood. Fuck all that Shakespeare Shakespearean bullshit. Like that's, a, that's just too much to say that this girl was a hoe from the beginning. That this girl was a hoe from the beginning. Like don't try the foundation of my relationship cannot be a falsehood. Who do you think you are, Macbeth? Shut up, you mean this is my relationship cannot be. Bro, you're going too deep into it. You're going too deep into it. It doesn't need to be like that. I have to change my Emma's thoughts. It's so ridiculous what she says. Ew! Ew! I have to change Emma's thoughts? This is the kind of guy that becomes a cock. C-U-C-K. Cock. 
how do you say that word i don't know how you say it man you know i'm a christian man i don't know how you say words like that cut uh, yeah but anyway if you don't know what that word means it's basically a guy or i think it's a girl as well but I, it's mostly guys i've heard of it from that like to watch their partners have sex with other people like they get pleasure out of it and sometimes it's it's you know demeaning and it's horrible but they get turned on it's it's weird when i tell you the world is, is weird like nah I'm, i couldn't deal with people no 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 people might come and say oh yeah but people look are entitled to love what they like nah get that shit out of my face man like what are you talking about yeah like what you like over there <laughs> like over there so that i don't lose her i suppose i'll have to get used to this wow okay now that one is the cock that one is the cock answer that is the cock answer man said i'll have to get used to it grow some balls noah but that's not the Noah that we are. That's not the Noah we are. Do that manipulation shit away from me. Let's go. I'm just, you think it's gonna say I got a lot of red flags? I don't think it is. Like, I, I don't think I've answered any red flags. Given any red flag answers. You know, I think all my answers have been very calm and responsive and, you know, very reliable. I'm the kind of reliable boyfriend you want. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You were over at your partner's place and you noticed a few stuff which belongs to your current partner's ex. It made you uncomfortable for real. <laughs> oh, so what's going to be your next move? Okay, this is a long one. I'm going to send a message to them like, I was over at your place recently and I noticed a few things that reminded me of your ex-partner. It's totally fine if you want to keep them around, but if it's making you uncomfortable or bringing up feelings, let me know and we can get rid of them together. That's kind of a heartfelt answer. That's kind of like a... That's, that's a bit too soft for me i'm not gonna lie like I, you know i like a guy that shows emotions and like you know that that puts it out there lets himself know you know a guy that can bring himself to express his feelings and emotions but i don't know what kind of fucking answer this like this is a lot <laughs> this is a lot this is a lot like yeah you know, this kind of time you just kind of you either bring it you bring it up right you bring it up and dead the combo dead it then and there that's not what why are you making it an emotional kind of moment for the two of you why is it now why are you trying to make it a symbolic kind of moment to get rid of your ex's no your partner's ex's stuff that shouldn't be an emotional thing it's as simple as yo i saw some stuff that was um oh i think that belonged to your ex's and um, next time i'm there i don't really feel comfortable with it or just tell her i don't really feel comfortable with it and if she gets rid of it then obviously she respects you. She don't get rid of that shit. She don't fucking respect you at all. Because if you said that you feel uncomfortable with it and she's still keeping it, for what reason? There's no reason for that. And she don't respect you. My guy, move on. Move on from that. If she's keeping her ex's shit, she's keeping her ex's shit, and you've told her you feel uncomfortable about that, but she still does it, <laughs> and she still has it, bro, she don't care about you. She, You are that placeholder. You are that placeholder for her. It's as simple as that. I'm busy with throwing a tantrum. No, we're not going to throw a tantrum. Nothing. I don't want them to believe that I'm disrespecting their past. That's not what I'm going to say. I'll happily do it for them if they don't want to throw them out. I mean, I wouldn't do it for them because that just shows that I care too much. And I wouldn't tell them I knew. Instead, I would hold off until I was certain they still had feelings for their ex. Bro, these answers are terrible. What the fuck? I wouldn't go with any of these. I'd probably send a text, but like, not this message. <laughs> Not this message. I'd just be like, yo, I saw some stuff that belonged to your ex. Made me feel a bit uncomfortable. And then she'll know that, okay, it's making him feel uncomfortable. I'll get rid of it because I care. Not that, oh, yeah, but, you know, the stuff my ex gave me is still too important. I don't really care about your feelings. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Get the flat. I don't really care about your feelings. So, yeah, we're, we're going to have to pick the first one. There was, there was nothing else to pick. Time to break up and move on for good. Please choose from the most to the least indicators that your partner that let your partner know as well it's time to walk away you are feeling more criticized than celebrated in your relationship it's time for you to reassess and consider this if this to be a sign to let it go yeah that's i mean that's valid that's valid if you got to the point of no longer caring about your partner the relationship or even yourself it's time to go that could just be depression i'm not gonna lie that could just be depression the last thing you want to do when you're depressed is just push everybody away so kind of don't feel like that's the best time to start pushing everyone away when you don't really care about anything because that sounds like you're depressed if your relationship is constantly one-sided then it's not a relationship so this is a sign to let it go which is also valid that's a few valid answers so far do you know what i mean that's a few valid answers 
No one should stay in a relationship in which he or she is being abused verbally, emotionally, physically, or financially. Well, yeah, for sure. Like, without a doubt. So, I mean, this kind of seems like the first one. So, we'll not pick that one first. We'll go with, um, I mean, second. If your relationship is constantly one-sided, yep, that's definitely second. Yeah, if you get to the point... Well, I mean, I've... Yeah, if you get to... Th these two can be interchangeable, but this one is definitely last. Let's say that you are willing to overlook cheating, even if it only happens once in a million times. What would your most likely reason for doing this be? First of all, I'd never overlook cheating. I don't think anybody should. Have some self-respect, okay? Have some fucky self-respect, okay? Like, come on. They did it one time, they'll do it again. They will always do it again. Once again, you are prolonging the mugging off. You are just prolonging the hurt, the pain. What are you doing? What are you doing? Do you honestly think that you can function properly in a relationship with someone moving forward, knowing that they did that shit to hurt you in the past? Be for real. <laughs> Be serious. So, shit, we ain't even fucking looked at the options yet. <laughs> I'd be blamed. I blamed myself for not providing my partner's needs. Yeah, some of these answers are crazy. Do you think anybody's picking that shit? Like, I blame myself for not providing my partner's needs. Bruh, how are you going to get cheated on and blame yourself? The reason would, to, I'm guessing the reason would be to overlook it and continue to have a great life. I don't know how you're going to have a great life when your partner is getting absolutely shmish shmish by somebody what are you talking about what do you mean <laughs> what do you mean she's getting absolutely robbie pipered and you're talking about <laughs> i'm having a great life i'm gonna smile through the pain bro you're not doing that you're not doing that listen you're not that guy you're not that guy you're not that guy <laughs> you're not that guy if i see myself value is extremely low and i have committed wrong just as bad that is the answer i'd go for because that's the one that makes sense right the only reason i would be and i've never cheated before but the only reason that i would be with somebody who cheats is if i've done it before so if i feel like i deserve that shit then if i feel like i deserve that shit then yeah then yeah that's fine that then not not that it's fine but yeah then i'd stay in that relationship that is the only way you stay in that relationship if you have cheated before and you feel like you deserve it because you do so yeah we'll go with that one which of these incompatible couples do you think cannot keep their relationship going choose one or more the person who is an introvert and the other is an extrovert i thought it's perfectly normal that's perfectly fine one person has fewer friends and the other had a ton of them one person likes staying indoors and the other likes going out and shopping i don't see how that can cause problems problems if they're just going out and shopping one person likes to be with their family and relatives the other spends their time with friends and hates spending time with relatives yeah i mean that's a bit of a weird one though i mean two complete opposites so one likes spending time with their family and their relatives does that mean i have to then spend time with their family and relatives because if we remember before that's what i said was a bit too much if i always have to be spending time with especially your family and relatives like that's a bit much but the, this person that doesn't hate spending time with their relatives i want to know what's going on at home because that's a bit of a weird one if you just don't like your family but um one person has a very good dressing sense the other just needs a shirt and a pant and they'll manage till it tears if they have to once again that's perfectly fine because unless you're shallow and like you know give a shit about that <laughs> then which i don't see why you'd be in a relationship with, the, with a, a guy or girl that doesn't you know fit your standards or what you would want so i don't you know one person never gets into a fight because though it's like a waste of time and energy even when it's not their fault the other will fight if someone wrongs them yeah, that's, that's a bit of, that's a bit of a disaster right there i'm just anybody that's always just wanting to fight is a bit of a nightmare to hang around yeah <laughs> i mean nah i mean <laughs> one person loves dogs and the other had a bad history with dogs don't get a dog i don't i don't understand don't get a dog i mean unless they're gonna get a dog then that's gonna be an issue one person is a fitness freak they eat healthy go to the gym every day and are also good at sports the other goes to the gym whenever they feel like their stomach is getting big eat whatever that is considered food and they're just good sports that they play just good at sports that they play on their xbox one person is a vegetarian the other is not and also eats chicken every day boom i'm gonna pick that one first this one for sure i mean the ones that can't keep their relationship there's not really anything else that can't keep their relationship going all of these are just very easily workable 
yeah, it's really just this one. But I just feel like you can't work it, work it with, work with. Have you ever been in a toxic relationship? No, I have. I had a part to play. Anybody who had a failed relationship has as well. Go back to the sandbox until you are mature enough to admit it. If you can't, I don't know the fuck he's talking to. Because <laughs> speak for your fucking self. Speak for yourself. It's like, it's speak for yourself. Have you ever been in a toxic relationship? I'll say this. I don't think I have, right? Unfortunately, yes. It took me to hit rock bottom before I realized I was being toxic. Tss, sucks for you, brother. <laughs> no, of course not. I could never be that dumb. That's lucky the world I'm gonna pick. Like, because I've never been like, what, what do you mean? Toxic relationships. Like, I'm not one of those people that's addicted to red flags and that's addicted to pain and suffering and talking about, oh yeah, but they did they, 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 they. I love that. Like, I don't I just look at the red flags and I say green. <laughs> nah, bro, I'm not 15 years old, I'm not 12 years old. I'm not 12 years old. So no, I don't I ain't been in no toxic relationship. Bro, I've been with respectable people. So yeah, I'm gonna go with of course not. I can never be that dumb sorry sorry everybody sorry everybody i just made good choices <laughs> uh, uh, what's this next question betty is your closest friend she arrived at your place and immediately began to talk to you about her marriage problems I feel like he loves his parents and siblings more than he loves me and the kids. Now don't get me wrong, I understand that neither replaces one another. However, I feel sometimes that we would go a great deal to make his family happy and he is willing to sacrifice mine and my kids comfort for their sake. Now mind you, I literally take care of his... You know what? I remember this. I remember this one. This one was basically them talking about this woman, Betty, supplies the guy everything, right? So let me see if I'm getting that right. So yeah, she gives a monthly allowance, sends them on trips, pays the bills, and this is essentially like his, like her marriage, that she's having to do this for the husband and the family. So yeah, she's talking about what, what they're gonna do. So as a loyal friend, provide her wider. So provide this woman advice on what to do with this man. It kind of sounds like the man is not really a nice person, because let's just read it again. I feel like he loves his parents and siblings more than he loves me and the kids. So this is a woman that's feeling torn. Now don't get me wrong, I understand that neither replaces one another. However, I feel like sometimes that he would do a great deal to make his family happy and he is willing to sacrifice mine and my kids' comfort for their sake. See, I feel like this is just a terrible thing because if you want to get into a marriage, that's your family now. <laughs> like, you know, especially when you got kids, that's your immediate family right now. That's your priority, if you know what I mean. That should be, you know, if your wife comes to you and she's telling you that, you, I get like, you know, your family, your mom, everything like that is very important to you. But when it's starting to jeopardize your immediate family that, you know, you actually have to provide for, that's when you have to start having serious talks. And the fact that she's going to the friend, the fact that she's going to the friend, that's a bit, you know, you got, you got to understand because she, she not said it to the husband or is he just in that position where he's not even listening anymore? Where just she feels like she can't because if you if you're in that position where your wife feels like she can't come to you to tell you these you know things that are obviously upsetting her then that relationship might not be you know borrowed time that shit might be on borrowed time she's going to outside sources for advice shit well we're just seeing we'll see you're just looking for appreciation that's all being appreciated is a wonderful feeling we all need to hear a thank you from time to time see that's a good that's some good advice that's some good advice that is some good advice you're looking for a mutual respect and care. Perhaps you don't get them enough or at all. A person starved, starved for it will often find himself craving it. Being the breadwinner in a family could be challenging. I fully grasp your problem. Receiving therapy would be incredibly beneficial and enlightening to hear different perspectives. Therapy? Yeah, I think it might be the most practical answer. I'm not going to lie to you. If therapy with her and her husband, they sit down, they talk about it and they, because like I said, that's the man's family as well still. Like we're talking his mom and his siblings, that's still his family. And those are the people he grew up with and you know, the people that took care of him. So he's also kind of feeling obliged to do something. So it's not really, it wouldn't be fair to just come at him full on in a negative manner. So I feel like, yeah, therapy, we go with that. We go with that. Please select a partner who you see as being the least helpful to you but who can actually be rather helpful in some way. A messy partner, I don't really, I mean, yeah, no, I don't want somebody that's messy, that's a lie. Um, egotistical partner, ooh, can handle someone with an ego. <laughs>
because I have a little bit of an ego as well, but not like a toxic one, just a self-belief kind of ego. This is a dumb question, but I'm just going to pick whatever. Okay. Oh, that was okay. Just one. Okay. What scares you the most in a relationship? Getting used to someone, feeling of inferiority, principle of least interest, trusting another person, them cheating or being abusive, dependency. See, now this is talking about me personally. And in terms of for me personally, I'd say getting used to someone. Get used to someone. Well, we'll pick that. We'll pick that. Which traits of the options best describe your ideal life partner? Okay, I can choose more than one. I want a partner who's my best friend. Definitely. I want a partner who encourages me to go for my dreams. Definitely. I want a partner I never get tired of. Definitely. I want a partner who wants the same things out of life that I do. Definitely. No, that's not important. That's not important. They can want their own shit. They don't need to have want the same things that I want. I was just on a bit of a roll there, so that's why. So I want a partner who knows how to support me just like I support him. Definitely. I want a partner who's going to be there for me every step of the way. Definitely. I want us to both be confident that we're in this forever. Definitely. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Next one. Not everything is a deal breaker, but some things can become one. So what are yellow flags? Now we got yellow flags? We got fucking yellow flags? <laughs> yeah, that's a thing? I didn't even know. I thought it was just red flags. Yellow flags? What What does that mean? Like, oh, warning signs? I thought the red flags was the warning signs. What are the yellow flags that have potential to turn into deal breakers to you? Keeping in touch with an ex. Ooh, that's a no-no. That's a fucking no-no. What? <laughs> that's a no-no. Deciding to make plans alone. I think that's a bit... It hurts a bit, but like... It's not like a yellow flag. It might just be a guy... Per no, but I mean, that's a bit weird if you're in a relationship and you want to just do things alone. Yeah, that's a bit, no. If you just always want to do things alone. Assuming and judging without knowing the truth about someone. Assuming and judging me? I don't know if that means me. Assuming and judging me? Or just somebody else? No, I'm not, I'm not really too bothered about that. Like, yo, couples talk shit all the time. It's like, that's that's a natural thing. Couples will talk shit about everybody else. It's like, we, we do that shit. It's like, we do that shit. There has never been a long-term relationship, so they've never been in a long-term relationship. That's not a red flag number i'm guessing this number of how frequently we were together the day or night would always end in sex are you complaining about that are you complaining that you're having sex every day <laughs> they are too close to their mother Ooh, i mean as a guy a girl being close with her mother is like they're never like they're, as a guy a girl's being close with their moms it's never ever like too close do you know what i mean they're never too close with their moms whereas guys can get too close with their moms but girls kind of just just chill with their mums and just, you know, they just cool like that. So, yeah, I think that's it, really. I don't really know what this means. Numbers are next. You're planning on moving in with your, your, your long-term partner, but he, she is highly, highly allergic to your cat. Your cat is your baby, but your partner can, can't keep their eyes open or breathe around her. You really do have to choose. What would you do? I don't really like them that much. I live with two cats, right? I live with two cats. But I don't like them. They can't, but to me, they're kind of just cool because they just do their own thing. They don't really bother you. Like, I like dogs. I'm a dog person, right? I'm a dog person. And that's just because of the attention that dogs always want from you. I just find that shit cute. Whereas cats, to me, I almost view cats like human beings. Not gonna lie, because I feel like they have their own complex emotions and shit that they, like, if a cat does not want you to touch it, it will let you know that it doesn't want you to fucking touch it. And that shit might be aggressive. Like, whenever I see people just grabbing cats and like holding them, I'm like, yo. This cat is fully, can fully just turn around and bite the shit out of you because it doesn't want you to touch it. Whereas a dog will always be happy that you're touching it. They will always be happy that you're doing shit. You know what I mean? The dog will always be happy around you. Whereas a cat just wants, a cat is just its own person, its own autonomous being that just does what it wants when it wants. Like, like my cats that I got, they don't bother me unless it's food time. That's the only time that they do shit. When it's food, they start acting out to get my attention. And that's when I'm like, all right, cool. Go, go feed them. And I go feed them. After I fed them, they just go back to lying down. My partner might be gone soon and my fluffy kitty will be here to comfort me. I mean, your, your, your man is dying. What are you talking about? He might be gone soon. Why do you want him to go? So oh, people, the people that are just, you know, pets are cool and that, but please let's not prioritize pets over human beings. Like, no. I never abandon my friends or pets for a partner. Partners come and go. Bro! <laughs>
What? Marry your cat then? What the fuck are you doing? Marry your cat? We mean partners come and go. This has got to be. <laughs> This has got to be the most white girl answer ever. What do you mean I never abandon my friends or pets for a partner? Partners come and go. <laughs> wow. Needless to say, well, the problem here is my pro. What are these answers? Needless to say, well, the problem here is my partner. They should leave. Oh my god. <laughs> these people love cats. They must people must really love cats. It's bullshit for someone to expect someone to just deal with that. If we are incapable of living between houses, I dump them so they can breathe again. Double-edged sword, I have no idea what I should do. Yeah, I have no idea what I should do, that's a fucking... <laughs> Ash is your close friend, and he or she is in a relationship with someone he or she wants to marry someday. Ash's partner is amazing. Both are amazing together. They've been dating a little over a year, but Ash's partner cannot handle Ash's sexual past. If they see a someone on the street that Ash knows and this person says hello, this partner just assumes Ash has hooked up with them and gets angry. If you could give advice to Ash, what would you say? I'd, I'd say like, you don't feel like you have to explain yourself. It's your past and that's that. She, he slept with some people too and she, he is being judgy. Really? Advice is unnecessary since it's a deal breaker hostility <laughs> i'd say it's your past not your present or future and you probably wouldn't be the person he she grew to like if you didn't have all those experiences see this is probably the answer that i'd so far i'd be most inclined to say just simply because that's valid like as in both of you have some experience this is advantageous this suggests that you both know exactly what you want in bed is what i would say no <laughs> no <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> nah, <laughs> that's a coping. <laughs> that's a way to cope. That's a way to cope. You have to help them realize that focusing on sex is not going to get them apart, to set them apart, which is fine because your relationship would not be reduced to sex anyway. Okay, but sex is also very, very important. So that's shit advice. I'm not gonna ever tell you to not have, to have less sex. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna tell you to have less sex. You should always have more sex if anything. So, uh, what advice would I give to Ash? I'd probably say this, it's your past, not your present or future. And you probably wouldn't be the person she she grew to like if you didn't have all those experiences. Because that's val. I mean, yeah, like I said, it's your past. Depending on what that past is, how are we going to work on it? How are we going to move forward from it? You know, it's very serious. Would you give your younger self any dating advice? Ooh, what would I give my younger self? Save your energy and stop wasting time trying to make something work that won't. Yeah, I don't know. I never needed to do I never needed that advice. Focus on yourself. Yeah, for, for, yeah, actually, yeah. Be giver, but never forget to love yourself first. I think this focus on yourself. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. Focus on my, yourself because, bro, like, I'm, I'm not really. When you're young and shit, that's the most important thing, man. You don't need to focus on that shit. I get, like, you know, obviously people are interested in the other people are interested in that type of shit when they're younger, but it's like that's always gonna come. I thought I heard some shit. It's, <laughs> that's gonna come eventually that shit's gonna come eventually but like you focus yourself and you build yourself up you make the best yourself the best person you can be the best version of yourself bruh gal are gonna be coming right left center middle up down one dimension two dimension they're gonna be coming all around you know what i mean you know what i mean focus on yourself build that confidence up build that confidence up and trust me trust me you will not fail is it normal to not talk to each other for a couple of days in a relationship for you? No, no, <laughs> like at least, at least text, at least, at the very least text. Like there is no way you could be in a relationship where you're going days without talking to your partner. Of course not. Everything is harmed when a connection drifts apart. It's common and completely normal. No, it's fucking not. It's quite okay to not talk to your partner for a long distance relationship, considering that people get busy. Fucking over for days, no no long distance that you should what every day you should be talking to your partner there is no right or wrong answer to this question as each relationship is different yeah we're going with that first but that would be my honest advice that i'd give that would be which mind game is worse what aboutism oh what aboutism if i remember that correctly but what the fuck is what aboutism i think it's always when you're arguing with someone and they're always trying to twist it around to be like okay but what about da 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 or what about when you did this what and it's like you know you can never really get to the root of their problems because they're always trying to switch it around 
and change it, change it to something else. But let's just have a little Google on what that means, actually. The technique or practice of responding to an accusation or difficult question by making counter accusations or raising a different issue. So yeah, like I said, when you're arguing with somebody and they turn it around to start talking about something else. So, oh yeah, what about, yeah, that's what aboutism. Negging, that's annoying. Love bombing is not that bad. Gaslighting is horrible. Bad, these are really bad. But what is worse? What aboutism? See, it's obviously sort of what aboutism, negging and gaslighting, right? Those are like, because with what, what aboutism, you can never ever get to the root of any problem. While you're in early stages of dating, with which option slash options hint you towards a bigger problem that's probably hiding in plain sight? Choose one or more. Oversteps boundaries too quickly and pushy. Or refer to themselves as bitch or psycho. I don't want that. You're jealous about every single call you received. That's also a no-no. We don't deal, we don't deal with that. We don't fuck with that. Lack of straightforward communication. That's also a no-no. We don't. The only thing about me, I'm not, I don't really deal with a lot of this shit bro i don't really deal with it it's it's i don't know i feel like that would also be very annoying so yeah that's too much someone who is nice to you but not nice to the waiter is not a nice person that's i wouldn't deal with them. all of these are just shit i wouldn't deal with any of these they're just fucking they all lead to, they're all leading to a bigger problem what do you think about the fear of commitment understandable but i fear making the wrong commitment not making commitment what do you mean a wrong commitment? If it's wrong, then get out of it. You can always leave, leave the commitment. I mean, as soon as I'm pretty sure, as soon as you found out that you've made a wrong decision, then shit. At least for me, it's been a lack of faith in the other person. So, okay, so you think the other person is going to be the one to wrong you. Okay. All right. It's not a commitment. It's not a commitment people fear. It's the commitment to you. Okay, yeah, that's valid. It's not the commitment people fear. It's the commitment to you we'll go with that one i ain't really got much to say on that let's say you crave a romantic relationship but also fear at the same time what do you suppose the potential cause of this might be usually this is caused by having bad parents or growing up in an unstable household both things okay Out of culture any relationship that doesn't have equal efforts from both parties complete trust and is and respect is likely to end sooner or later that's true though that's true any relationship that doesn't have equal efforts from both parties, complete trust and respect is likely to end sooner or later. Maybe that's why. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I feel like for me, but that for me, that would be that would be why. I mean, if there's not effort coming from both parties, and I feel like that shit is dwindling, not both parties, but from one party, and I feel like that shit is dwindling, then yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. We don't got much questions left. <laughs> what would you do if your partner dodge answering is dodge answering questions? Oh. That's a big red flag. That's a big no-no. Actually, nothing. We would not do that. <laughs> the questions could be too personal, confidential, or just none of my business. So you just leave it at that. So I say, yeah, depends on my mood. If you could have one superpower, what could it be? Oh, this is a very red flaggy question. What is that? Controlling probability would be nice. I could, for instance, enhance my chance of winning the lottery while lowering my chances of being in a car accident. See the power of probability, those of us that like know Marvel and people like the Scarlet Witch, we know just how powerful. Of course, shape-shifting. To manipulate people, I can change into a different person, turn into an animal, such as a bird, to gain a different perspective on the world. I want to just shape-shift. Time manipulation would be awesome. The ability to pause, rewind, and fast forward. See, that's a, that's a nice power, but that's very overpowered though, like time manipulation. And plus, what if something catches you off guard? Like, so someone could just shoot you in the back of the head and like, that's that. The power of compulsion sounds perfect for that. Like if I tell someone to do something, they do it happily. I'd gain access to places, take donations, change public policy. Uh, no. <laughs> Because you could do all that with probability. So it's like, come on, you can you can do you you can do all of this with probability. No, you wouldn't pick that I'd, probability all the way. That's a sick power. That is a great power to have. Lastly, what profession do you secretly think you'd be fantastic at? Oh pilots. Ever since I was young, I wanted to be I did want to be a pilot at one point. I'm not gonna lie to you. I did actually want to be a pilot. But then my grandma told me, rest in peace, grandma. 
she told me right why would you want to be a pilot don't you know you can fly to the sun and i was like oh shit fuck me i can't do that then because <laughs> I don't want to fucking fly to the sun, you know, like the way she painted it. I remember being a kid back then and the way she painted it, because I was just a shortened version of what she said. But the way she painted it to me was that pilots actually fly alongside the sun because I didn't know the sun was outside of Earth at this point. So the way she painted it was that pilots fly alongside the sun. And if something goes wrong, like say the wind pushes the plane, I don't know, I was like eight years old at this point. So that's what I was thinking. If the wind pushes the plane too hard, the plane might get too close to the sun and like burn the plane. So she was like, pilots. So in my head, I was thinking, yo, being a pilot is such a dangerous job. I was like, fucking being a pilot is a dangerous job. Because at any moment, the wind can just take you. <laughs> that, that's what I thought. That's what I honestly thought. So that's what actually stopped me from wanting to pursue being a pilot. So who knows? I could have been a pilot right now. And I wouldn't be sad. <laughs> but um, ethical hacker, bug bounties. It's a big world to explore. Uh, no, I don't want to be a hacker. Being a member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. What the fuck is that? Forensic psychologist. Ow. I'd kill to be a travel journalist, blogger, writer. Um, yeah, probably this one. Just because. I mean, I wouldn't say that. I mean, yeah, I'd kill it because all I'd be doing is just. Oh, I'll be wait blogger, wait travel journalist. Yeah, I'd just be traveling and just doing shit. You know what I mean? You know what? No, I'd be a good police, mounted police. No, because no, we fuck, we say fuck the police over here. So no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We do not support. We do not support that. I'd like to travel to. I uh, try to travel. Be a travel journalist. All right, we're going with that one. We're going with that one. I like to be a travel journalist because I don't want to be. A, to be fair, no. Go back to my child. I would have been a great pilot. I would have been a lavish pilot. Yeah. What is this? Ooh. I'm 23% codependency. I don't even know what the fuck this means. This is very underwhelming for telling me who I am. Codependency is a term used to describe the unhealthy habits that developed in relationships where one's partner relies on the other for emotional support, validation, and other needs. In a codependent relationship, both part. This is just a lot of shit. This is just a lot of shit. This is a lot of shit. The questions were nice and fun to have, but none of this. I, I don't know. None of this means anything to me. <laughs> none of this means anything to me. What, 23%? <laughs> this is the highest? I told you, Lord. When I tell you I'm not toxic in the slightest, I'm not toxic in the slightest. So this is just very underwhelming <laughs> because. I'm just a chilled guy. <laughs> I'm just a chill. My worst trait is codependency, and that's 23%. Let's have a read what it is. Let's just have a read what it is. Let's continue where we left off. In a codependent relationship, both partners are not getting their own needs met. Instead, they are focused on meeting the other person's needs. Codependency can be seen in any kind of relationship between friends or family members or romantic partners. It is one of the most common signs of an emotionally abusive relationship. Whoa. <laughs> whoa what do you, what do you mean <laughs> codependency often happens when someone gives up their own identity to be closer to a partner who may be emotionally unavailable or abusive in some way codependents often feel like they need to do everything for their partner and make them happy in order to keep them around codependency can also occur in long-term relationships where one partner has an addiction problem in this case the non-addicted partner may feel responsible for helping their loved ones to get sober or stay sober, but they end up enabling their loved one's addiction instead of helping them to overcome it through healthy means. What's, what was the next? What was the next? Overly, con overtly controlling, overly controlling behavior. See, this is what I mean. So it's like there's a balance here because yeah, we got 18%, 19% overtly control overly controlling behavior and 23% codependency these are both like opposites so this just shows that like yeah oh gaslighting that's a fucking that's that's what we gotta read 16% of a gaslighter <laughs> I do chat a lot of shit to my girl I won't like I do chat a lot of shit gaslighting is a form of emotional abuse that can happen in any relationship it is when one person tries to convince the other person that they're wrong, confused or even crazy. The victim of gaslighting might start to believe that they are the problem and not the abuser. People who are being gaslighted may feel like they are going crazy or start to question their own sanity. They may wonder if there is something wrong with them or if they are imagining things that aren't true. 
Gaslighting can be especially dangerous when it happens during arguments between couples who may make who it can make the victim feel like they are at fault for their partner's anger, which it's important to remember that you, that you never deserve to be treated this way by anyone, whether it is a friend, family or romantic partner. If someone tries to manipulate you or make you feel crazy, then it is time for you to reach out for help from a therapist or counsellor so that you can start making changes in your life. So yeah, people, I'm going to hop off now. It's been a nice little get back, get back to it stream. I'm going to be back again tomorrow, six, 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 six o'clock to get on it and get it moving. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Depends um, how long it takes to get. But yeah, that, that will be up on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna watch another video. On, I was gonna watch a video on stream.